very fortunate to have a guest lecturer from Chile today, Professor Kamakana Sanfrodo from the University of Tataka uh, and Adika is visiting us. I had a good fortune of visiting him in Adika last summer. Happy to see him with us here in the um, Professor Santoro received his MA in archaeology at Cornell University and his PhD at the University of Pittsburgh. And he's, uh, he's done research and extensive publication um, on everything from the archaic period in northern Chile to the Inca period. Um, he was also the editor of Chungara, a very uh, well regarded journal in South American archaeology for many years. So, join me in welcoming Professor Santoro. Thank you, Nicolás. I need to look at her first. Good. Uh, well, first, uh, it is a pleasure to be here to, to today, not tonight, even though. <laughs> and uh, so uh, my presentation should be called also the bad, no, the good, the bad and the ugly, you know, in the, in the history of, 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 uh, of the Atacama Desert. And I will explain why. And I'm trying to avoid to the, the expression or, the, or this division, this, uh, this sort of a false division between prehistory and history. And I'm using, I'm inspired by this recent book by, by Clyde Gamble. And uh, what is it called? Looking at the deep history of, of, of hu humankind, and and, uh, and I think he he said that we, when we divide this prehistory and history, it's a, sort of it's a real, a very, very false um, a dichotomy. And uh, and I think the, uh, w w uh, the way that I'm going to present the the human history in the Dakama Desert is is a is a good example of the, of, the, of that uh, that this division is very artificial. So, uh, and I will explain why do we, I, I'm talking about the good, the bad, the second good, and the second ugly. In, that's in terms of, of, the, of, the, of the ecological condition of the Atacama in the last 17,000 years since uh, the pe people arrived in, in, this, in, in these landscapes. And uh, so, and, uh, when, uh, and I was in Orlando in the SIA meeting uh, last week, and uh, one of the, I had to comment one of the symposium. And I, when, when, I, when I was doing that, I finished my, my, my <laughs> comments by saying that in 1987, Louis Binford, in, in, in another SIE meeting in Toronto, he was reviewing two, week, two days of, of uh, papers about people moving by the end of the Pleistocene, early on the Holocene. And uh, so his, one of his fine remarks was that the only thing that stopped people to move in or out is water. So it meaning that snow, high temperature, uh, hypoxia, whatever, it doesn't stop people. The only thing that stops human society is when water comes out of the landscape. So that's the reason because I'm talking about good times, bad times, and ugly times, because the ugly time is a combination of both things. La turn on the lights. Okay. <laughs> La it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination of bad environment, but also bad way of people dealing with this environment. So just, uh, uh, just to show you where, where the, this, uh, this Atacama Desert is, is, it is located, uh, those are examples of other arid land in, in, the, in the planet. And uh, so we know that, uh, that this is the driest place in Earth because there is almost zero rainfall in this area today. And it has been that way for millions of years. It's not a matter of the, of, of the, it's not a consequence of the last 10 or, 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 or 20,000 years. It's a very old, old process that have been uh, related with this, this uh, landscape in <coughs> South America. And uh, so particularly I, we, my, my, our research uh, work is, uh, in, is in this area that is sort of an inland basin close to the, to, the, to the coast, to the Pacific coast, which is over here and uh, the, the, the Andes. So in this case, and uh, that's something very interesting for the Atacama Desert. When people go there, they see that there are, there are uh, vegetation along the valleys, there are vegetation in this inland basin. So say, well, how can you say that this is a desert when you have all this vegetation and all this, uh, uh, all this farming activity? But the problem is all depend of the rainfall here. And rainfall has been uh, dramatically changed through time in the last 17,000 years. So when there, is, when there is rain up here, 
that the whole history down the, down the slope is, is different when there is when the, the, the rain decreases here things change through the Pacific too. So it, it is th this variation through time that we are now studying with the paleoecologists, you know, including Ron here, you know, and, and Marco, and uh, in order to, to see how the, the, the landscape or the environment was, 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 was uh, changed and provo uh, provide opportunity f for society to live there. I, always talk about this and some of my colleagues said, well, you are a geographic determinist archaeology, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> that's the way well, that, that we, we are doing our research, you know, and uh, probably I'm wrong, but uh, that's the way that we are doing things, you know. And, uh, so if you look at the map, you will see, you will see that there are some vegetation here that is provoked by, by this, this coastal fog, locally called, called Kamanchaka, and I will talk about this later. And all the vegetation that, that is related with the, the rainfall here in the high Andes. So we are talking about 3,000 about 3, meters above sea level and about 1,000 meters above sea level here. So in between, we have this, the, what we call the core of the Atacama Desert with no water, with no rain, with, not, with nothing at all, but with some period of, 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 of uh, some riparian and spring water coming, uh, uh, coming through. And, that, and, and, and those conditions provoke uh, the, the possibility for human society to live there. This is a typical uh, epoch when, when there are some rain coming from the, from the highlands. And uh, so in, it, it's inundates the whole, the whole scenario there. You know? And uh, this is a picture that I took about 10 years ago, uh, close, just on the, on the highway, the Pan American Highway. And it was just probably. Uh, probably was a, a rain in, 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 the, in summertime. And um, so let, let me tell you something. The, the rainfall in this area is about three millimeter, 300 millimeters per year, which is almost nothing. You know that in California, I think you, you, that's a minimum you, you have here. In the Kalahari, for instance, you have between nine, 900 millimeter to about 350 millimeter. In the Namibia, it is the same thing. In the Australian desert, it is, it is the same thing. You, you have rains in those, in this, in those deserts, but here, no. So these are the ugly and the bad periods. You know, that, I mean, we'll, we'll be talking about this, uh, this uh, late Pleistocene epoch with two main periods of, of, uh, of rain that, that are called the Central Andean period uh, uh, pluvial event one and Central Andean pluvial event two. Most of the, the, the archaeological site in, in, the, in the Atacama are located within, related with this, uh, uh, with this period. We still don't know what, what's happened here. We, we have the impression or the hypothesis that people arrived here just about 14 or 16,000 years ago, or maybe even earlier, if we uh, accept and agree with the last uh, radiocarbon dated by, by um, um, Tom Dillehay in Monteverde. He just published a, a, a new date which is about 18,000 years ago, meaning that probably people were living here too. And so they, when they, then we have a very dry uh, period or, or, or what with the archaeological silence that have been told, uh, said by Lautaro Núñez. Then we have another pluvial phase. This is the, the second good period. And, and then we have the, the, the last uh, the dry phase, which is related with this ugly period, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Probably you remember that, that movie. <laughs> Uh, so uh, the, 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 again, the, these are uh, these are the, 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 the periodicity of this of this uh, pluvial event, and this is the, the, how the landscape looks today. You know, uh, and can can you see those plant plants remains there? Well, we have been dating that, and those are between seventeen thousand and ten thousand years ago. It is amazing. It, it is incredible that we, when you walk there, you cannot believe that those plants remains, leaves shrubs and, 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 and trunks are, 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 there, uh, are there since about 17,000 and even earlier. You know? and, uh, so this is Eugenia Gallo, one of the authors of, the, of this uh, research. She's in the Napa Valley now. And so th these are our records for, for this, uh, this uh, previous time. So most of our archaeological records are located over, over this period of time. 
we have some archaeological record over here that is still we are, we are, we are taking with, with caution, you know, in order not to be, you know, to jeopardize our, our, our pro project. And so, uh, and until now, we have uh, four archaeological sites related with this early occup human occupation in the Atacama Desert. This was the first one that we found uh, uh, about four years ago, but then we have this, this uh, outcrop, little quarry. With, with, one, with one site related with this quarry. We have this huge area here, which is sort of, seems to be a sort of a hunting area. Uh, we have a camp, and now we have, in January, we found another camp here. So, with, and these are about 20 to 25 kilometers in, 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 in an area, you know. So, it's, it's, a, it's a very um, close area for people to live. And, uh, and I will tell you, tell you what happened there. And uh, so once again, those, those are also sites that we have been looking for. In most of these sites are paleoecological sites with dates that, are, that show that there was water and vegetation there. But no, in, all, in all, of, all of the case, we found archaeological sites associated. So we, we still don't know if this is the, the, the consequence that people didn't select those particular places or is, is a problem of conservation, probably a, a flood washed out some of the archaeological site. And uh, so the, most of the, the, the early sites are located over this uh, uh, terrace number one, as the, as the, the geologists of the, of the program are calling this. This is the Jason Reg from the Miami University. And uh, so this is, uh, this is the, an old flood, flood plain, and, uh, which is called the, the Terrace 2.5. And most of the of the this, this second period is located here. I, I will show you later. And um, so this is the, against the, the, the landscape today. And uh, probably in those days, there was vegetated like this. And there was plenty of these kind of animals. And uh, uh, camelids, and vicuña, and guanaco, and small rodents like this catch and things like that. So this is the typical terrace number one. And this, uh, this, is, a, this is a Miocene terrace. This was the plane that, that, was, that was carved by the, the late Pleistocene activity, you know, that, that was, was cutting the, this, uh, this plane, and this is sort of a rem remnant, remnant of, 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 that, uh, of that erosion. And, uh, and uh, so I think I have another. Yeah, here we are. And uh, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, that's a, it's a, we planted this, this tree last night, you know. <laughs> And uh, so these are the species that we have. We already have uh, have um, identified. This one, Birica pavonis, Escalonia, and Equisetum, they, they need water. They are, these are not desert plants. If there is no running water, it, you cannot have them. Actually, they, they, you can find these this, 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 uh, uh, trees anywhere in this area today. The only one that can grow if there is some, some, uh, some um, um, Ground, ground water, yeah. Oh, yeah. Underneath is this genius mojes. And uh, yeah, and here, one of these trees, this is a real tree that we found there, is a, is a prosopis tamarugo. You know, prosopis tamarugo, the way that it works, it goes first down until they get the ground water, then they, they, move, they, they go up. And it, it's perfect because uh, here we are about five meters from, from the actual flood plain of that epoch. So probably, we think that probably this, this plane here, where the, the camp is located, these are not false people. These are, uh, these are the archaeology doing the field work here. Uh, so it was vegetated. It was, it was shaded by, by, by trees. So this was a completely different landscape 12 or 13,000 years ago. This is once again a, 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 a drawing that there was one with the early occupation, and then the, 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 later, the, the later, later phase of this, of this landscape with the, with the later occupation uh, that I will explain later. And uh, this is just a, the same, this is the high terrace, the, the Pliocene uh, terrace with the, with the archaeological site, and all this, this flood plain, you know, this later flood plain. Uh, that was eroded during the, the, the late, the, during the Pleistocene. This is the, the, all these green dots are, are archaeological, these are lithic uh, events. 
the main area of occupation is here. This side, this part of the, the of the of this terrace is higher than this one here, and from here you can, you have a nice view of of the of the landscape as I show here. You see, you, when you are standing here, you can see the the the, the, Andean, the Andes, and also you can you can see to to the coastal cordillera. The Andes is about 80 kilometers to the east, and the and the, the, the Pacific is about another 80 kilometers. So the why people selected this site because it was was a very nice node to 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 connect with with this outside world but also it was it was plenty of, of resources like this so it was a sort of a golf golf, golf uh, field you know uh, green and and uh, with, uh, with a lot of vegetation and animals and so on and so on so we did some excavation and and uh, and uh, so we found what what they call this prepared hearth with some this vertical clasp and some uh, some wooden sticks and uh, other sticks that, that have been identified around here, we have we have now almost 20 meters of excavation, and uh, and, um, and because of the conservation there, we have all the artifacts that were produced uh, during that, th this time are, are preserved, including the threads made out of of camelite fiber. But we know now that we are, they were managing camelite fiber, plant fiber. And uh, and uh, and also leather and uh, so and uh, so they were collecting this 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 Nazarius gaji little shells and we know that that they were uh, making a hole there yes there are several of these probably the, to make a necklace or something like that we we have this uh, plant fiber covered with this red pink pigment and bone artifact and lithic artifacts and so on so on so. Um, they, they, these people were very knowledgeable, knowledgeable in, in managing different mat uh, raw material and in ma managing the, 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 the resources, the local resources as well as outside resources, uh, including obsidian from the highland. This is the only piece of obsidian that Nico have have, have checked. You know, and, uh, you know that we know that from from where this is coming from. It's not com coming from Bolivia as, as Jose Capiles wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, but it's really far away. It's a, it's a, it is about 500 kilometers. This obsidian w was was brought from about 300 to 400 kilometers to the north to the northeast. Yeah, is it, no. This is from from uh, from um, the Visviri area. Yeah. It is amazing, you know, that, that, that uh, because you know Luis Borrero, he he thinks the opposite. He, no, no, not Luis Borrero. Um, Carlos Vasquero, we have been discussing about 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 this, how people manage the, the, their their environment, and it, he thinks that people were were most of the time settling w one particular area without moving much outside to a, to a, so in a larger landscape. But I think people were moving a lot during this time. And this is just the same the same uh, example that we saw before, with the different artifacts associated with this uh, with this site. And uh, thi this is the, the outcrop uh, of Chayacoyo. And uh, these are the we have more than around 1,000. This 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 uh, uh, red dots are are the again um, lithic um, uh, event. With, but the, the, with the raw material coming from this from this uh, outcrop, but also raw material that was brought to this area, so the, so they transformed this as a huge workshop in order to produce different uh, uh, artifacts or to produce the, the, these bifacial artifacts that they, they move out to different to different places within the area and outside the, the area too. This is the, one of the excavation in this, the, the Shipana site. Look at the, the, the dating. We have this date that is 14,000. These, these are not calibrated. So this probably this is about 16 to 17,000 years ago. But look, it's, it's close to this other date here. This is a tweak. So look at the, at the, at the, at the plus and minus is 680. So this is, that's the problem we, that we have with these old date, dates, you know, uh, they have this problem. Because most of them are within, the, within around 10,000 years ago. These are the, the, the same camp. This is the, 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 the Pampa Altamorogal Basin. There. So this, this was one of the, of the, of the uh, ravines that, that were getting into the, into the, the, um, this, this basin. Um, so people was camping here. This is the outcrop. 
And uh, so we know that, uh, that uh, I'm going to go back, uh, back again, there, are, when there is a, on the surface, we found a concolepa, concolepa show. So that was the, the last meal that they, they have there, and it is about 9,000 years ago, the, 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 the date of that. And that was the end of the, of the story. There is no more activity in, the, in that area. So this is Pamparamadita, the other side. Again, you, those, these, all these light areas are, are a re recent flood. And uh, so if you walk here, you will see that there are some so, so there are surfaces that are in a higher position. And it's in those higher areas where people a, a place their, their camp, and we have, we have now um, about seven hectares of, of site, plenty of, of, of this arrowhead and knives and, and scrapers, and, uh, but no, uh, no, this is a new, new kind of, uh, of, um, of, of, uh, of, of type that, that, that people from, our, from, Argent, from, our, from Uruguay think that this, this recent, especially this one, this one, this one resembled the El Tigre kind of, uh, of uh, uh, arrowhead that, that have been found and defined for Uruguay. So we, we need to, to, to look at that, at, at the typology of that. But uh, uh, this is Jose Capriles point, because he, he is saying that this kind of rock is not local, I, and, and I think he's right. He was brought from Bolivia and that's around his side, so he's happy that at least in those states the Bolivian were were going going down to to, to Chile. You know, so he has a, he has a now historical uh, um, uh, um, fundament to, to claim to to support uh, uh, the claim for them. So th this is the Cueva Bautista where he had been working for the last two years. This is about. Uh, uh, there are five, 500 kilometers from from the, from the coast and about 300 kilometers from from this from Cre from Crevelada Maní. So the, the so this rock is coming from somewhere over here. So once again, we, we think that in those days, people were, con were con managing local landscape and an and, and outside la landscape or the two. So these are the, f the four sites that we have now related with, the, the, with all the, the, the sites that we already know for, the, for southern Peru. These are around here, Arequipa and Copiapó, somewhere over here. And uh, so there are not many sites. And the only, thing, the, the only thing that we have been looking now is that most of the sites, the early sites, are just one single site within the, the South American map. So with, with, with one single site, it is hard to understand the settlement pattern. So that's the reason because instead of going look for more a larger territory, we, 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 we have concentrated in a very narrow and small territory in order to see different ways of using this space and try to understand how people manage <coughs> their resources and they, their history there. So here is the, what happened about 10,000 years ago. We will have the, the first, we will get into the first bad period because there is a, a two arid uh, period between ten, about nine to 10,000 years ago for, from about two, three to 4,000 years ago. And it's varied depending where you are located in the map. But in the core of the Atacama, there were at least five or 6,000 years without water. So the condition that, that we have here completely disappeared over, over this period of time. So we have what we call sort of a collapse. And uh, so there are two major shifts in, in, the, in this historical process. People moved to the coast. It doesn't mean that there was no people before that. But we, we got the impression that the coast started to be used more, more, um, uh, uh, more intensively, as well as the highlands. Most of the archaeological sites in the highlands are dated about 10 to 11,000 years ago. Cueva Bautista is contemporaneous with the site in, 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 the, in the Mani area, but most of the, the good, the, the, the most of the site that we have here are about 10,000 years ago before present. If you have any question, please stop, and I can, I can work with that. Uh, this is just uh, the end, entering in, in the second period here. 
the between 2500 to 1300 before present. Once again, the paleoecologists know that the, there was an increase in the rainfall in the highlands. So the whole riparian and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the paleo wetlands uh, were, were, uh, were recuperated again, and so people went back <coughs> to the core of the Atacama. And all of the, the, the archaeological sites that have been found along the way, but the, the way that when, when they went back, they, 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 did, they, they keep doing hunting and gathering, but they added farming, and that produced a major change in their, in their, in their history. You know, and uh, this is just again, I, I, this is a reproduction of, 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 the, of, the, of the same periodicity, and uh, the, all the data that we have for this, for this, uh, for this period here, for this, for this pluvial event here. And, uh, Going back to the to the uh, to the uh, Pampa del Tamarugal Basin, all of these quebraditas or, 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 or ravines uh, that end, that uh, that end in the in the Pampa del Tamarugal Basin are uh, we have found uh, we have found little villages. I don't know if you can see there is one here, Pircas, and there is another one here in a, in an, an environment that is completely arid today, hyper arid. In those days, probably there was there were Three, the, the same trees that I mentioned for, for, the, for, the, from, for, the frame, for the first epoch, especially Prosopis Tamarugo. And there is an issue about Prosopis Tamarugo that I'm, I'm not going to mention now. But So this is a close-up of the, one of these, the Pirca early, early site, early formative site. And this is a, a detail of, the, of, the, of, the, of that site. This is, this is an, the, the other site that is across the, 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 the ravine, and it's called Ca Caserones. It has a wall that was made about 800 AD, and uh, so these are just the, the studies that have been done by, by Maurice Uribe and, uh, and his team. Another picture of the same area. This, this is about two hectare uh, site. Detail of the walls is very well preserved, and, uh, and uh, it's full of, of, of different, different activities. And um, then we have another site. It's called Aldea Guatacondo. It, it is, they, they, they put it in, in an area where it's, there is a pampa here, there is the, this, this cut that, that was produced by this ravine, and then so you have an, another, another high terrace. So it's well protected, you know, and you have a very nice view of, of the landscape. And it has this huge plaza with a with central menin, menin, men, menir here. And uh, so it's all the same, the same epoch. And this is Ramadita, another site with the same, the same time in the same landscape, and uh, the tail of the of the constructions. You know, they uh, there were very well done. You know, they were these were not village, villages that were used uh, for for a short period of time. People people built their, their villages there, and they stayed there for a long for for several days and several 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 uh, years. And these are the conservation of these posts that, uh, that, have, that are a, a prosopis trees, uh, different details. And uh, all this green area are the, the, the farming land that need, that require artificial irrigation. You cannot have farming here if you don't get water from all these ravines and you have to put the, that, that water into canals and to spread it, it is over, over, the, over, the, the, um, over the, the landscape. And it, it is, has been calculated that there are, there, are, there are around 400 hectares here of, of, uh, of, 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 the, of land transformation for farming. These are some of the products they kept collecting algarro, which is or uh, prosopis, which was in some way or another was the staple. They have corn, they have, these are the seeds, this uh, and, and, uh, and algodon. They, they produce several things and they collected several things from the, from the local landscape, but also they need to bring shellfish and fish in order to feed the, all, the, the whole population here. They couldn't stop managing the hunting and gathering world, you know, it's, it's, it is impossible for, the, for them. And I, and I think it was, this was a tricky thing for them to understand 
that the only way to maintain their society there was by bringing things from outside, as we do today. You know, the, most of the minor towns in northern Chile are supported by things that are brought from outside. And this is the work that we, have, we are doing in this broken Pinat Quebrada, the Quebrada Maní. As you know, you can see once again the, the, the terrace, you know, the, the, the farming land with, the, with all these cana canals. You know, they, they were really masters of uh, managing the water. You know, the, they got the, the water from in a higher position in, in, the, in the Quebrada, and they moved the water down. They used the natural channels, you know, when they, they, when they in order to, and they, they connected, you know, the, the, the natural channels plus the, their own channels. And uh, so, once again, we have 200 kilometers here of, of ch channels and farming land that, that were used for about 1,000 years in the, during the same epoch. These are the work that is done by, by, the, by our colleagues, the paleoecologists. These are um, examples of, the, of, the, of this uh, farming. And uh, these are also part of the, of the transformation of the landscape to do to do the, the farming. You can look, you can see this canal in, in Google. You can fo actually, you can follow them, you know, from, from the, from the, from the, um, the mouth of the, of the, of these quebradas going into the, into the, the Pampa del Tamarugal. So there are, once again, there are hundreds of kilometers. So we, we can, all of them will be hundreds of kilometers of, of of canal and farming land being under, under cultivation in this, uh, during the, this time, and uh, including a dam, this one, which is 750 millimeter square, yeah, cubic, square meter, thank you. And, uh, but you know, it is interesting because there are canals that are getting from here in order to get the water from here. But also during during good period of time, they, they go with the canal outside of the, of, of the dam. So they, they manage the two things, you know. They, they are, it, it, it is amazing how they, they know how to, to use the water and how to manage the water. These are just examples of the canal, you know, going down the, 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 the stream. And you can see the, the, the farming area there. And, and in this case, we don't have a concentrated town. We don't have, as we saw before. So the way that they did, they, they map their, their village all over this landscape. So we have concentration of two or four or five uh, 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 domestic uh, um, areas, and then more farming. So they were sort of living between the, the, the farming areas. And we found this sh shark teeth and this uh, uh, copper uh, mineral made out of a, a pendant. This is the T1, the old T1. And you, you know, it's inter interesting. There is no activity of the farmers in, this, in, the, in the T1 terrace. They look and they wanted to settle over here. And I think probably they didn't want to be seen from, uh, from, from, over, from far, far away. Because probably this was one way to keep, you know, and to be safe. In early time, I think was the opposite. Few people in the whole landscape, you need to be seen in order to be to get connected with other people that move that was moving around. But in this case, most of this side sort of are in, in, in embedded, you know, in in, the, in this in sort of internal landscape. This is just another little dam with, with this rock, with, with the rock with with rock art there. So there is always this connection, you know that uh, you know that people w w is doing economic things on one hand, but in simultaneously they they are ha having this sort of sense given activities, you know, by by marking the, the rocks with this with this rock art. Uh, this is another detail of of the of the of the. Um, uh, canal. We walk this canal, and we have radiocarbon dating. You know, so we we know that they are, they are pretty well um, um, dated. And uh, just uh, this is part of the, ch the, the the tools that were used for farming. We know that there have there have been some some um, um, microscopic uh, microscopic analysis of the res residua over here, and so we know that they were using 
uh, llama dung as a fertilizer because there are some some er, er, organic material that is is part of the of the of the llama dung, so they were fertilizing the the, the land too. And well, besides farming and creating all this landscape, they, they also were marking the landscape with the, with these uh, with these uh, figures, you know. And, and we think that this is a very old uh, figure that is called Encero Unitas. And the color, if you if you if you get get the 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 the, 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 the Yeah. Uh -huh. 